Good afternoon, Pastor David. How you doing, John? Welcome, everybody, to an unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. Welcome back. We missed you. Oh, I'm sure you did. <laughs> you took over the church doing Wednesday night. You're up there giving the bulletin and just talking about yourself. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you did. Oh, uh, we're glad to have you back, and we celebrated 41 years. Amazing. Uh, and But on Wednesday, uh, it looks like there's going to be a good study. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> As you're continuing the series on marriage and the family, the series the the series is now shifting to children. Yeah. And in in Ephesians chapter six verse one, it says, "Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right." And so we see that the first duty of a child is obedience. Yet this is that verse is focused on the child, Pastor House. What's the importance as parents that we lead our children? in obeying Jesus because I like what you've pointed out here that some say we will let our children decide what faith if they if any they will practice if we don't bring them to Jesus the world will lead them away from him well that's absolute true we know that for a fact and I'll be giving uh, a few things you know uh, related to how um, the world is lined up in opposition to faith especially the Christian faith it's not really, at least here in the United States, it's not as obvious, but um, I believe it's worldwide. In the end, it is because the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And he's the denier of Christ and all. So every false religion finds its origin in the, the one who is the first liar, you know, and first murderer, Jesus said, which is Satan. So all of his lies and conniving is, is created what has been called the system of the world. And the world is an opposition to God, and all that is within it, less of flesh, less of the eyes, and the pride of life, is all of the world and not of God, which is in opposition to the righteousness of God and all of that. And so our children, being born with a uh, sinful nature, by nature, according to Ephesians 2, 3, they are children of wrath. We are children of wrath. Well, if you don't, if you don't, bring the word of God and, and evangelize your children. Well, the world doesn't even have to try to. They're already prone to that. So the real task that a parent has, I believe, is to deposit the seed of faith and to nurture and nourish it over a child's lifetime. And so we'll be looking at that in some detail tomorrow. But there's no doubt in my mind, John, to send a child to school today in some school districts, not all, thank God there are Christian teachers. Thank you who are Christian teachers for your good that you do to our, for our children, bless you. But there are so many who are not and are actually opposed to faith, opposed to the Christian faith, who have made it their aim to evangelize those who profess Christ, especially many college professors, mm -hmm. but that goes down through the secular educational system all the way to um, preschool where you're having drag queens in libraries, you know, that are telling stories to children to make themselves seem to be acceptable and normal. And that's what we're going through right now. I could give you many examples about that, but that's every parent knows that. The child comes home from school and you don't know what they've been exposed to. And the higher in education they go into college, the more the brainwashing, you know. I'll be quoting Hitler and mm -hmm and uh, others who, who basically said Socrates who, and <laughs> Karl Marx, mm. you know, who spoke concerning the institutional education of children because Hitler said, you give me a child, you know, and I, I, I can show you the man ultimately. Seven years of, um, if you give me a child for seven years, it was said, uh, I, I'll show you the man. So it's a formative period that that uh, we have to guard the most with our children, and that's when we should be pouring in to our children the things of the Lord. And yet, it, it seems that some Christians, not not all, but but a good portion, have looked at Sunday as being uh, instead of going to the house of the Lord to worship God and to celebrate faith, it's a good time to have soccer competition or softball or whatever you know to travel on this team because God knows one day you're going to be a soccer player making. $50,000 a year, right? I mean, to, to, it just amazes me at how parents are willing to give up their children to the enemy. And then they come and cry to us, and you know this, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with my child. But may I ask you, did you do devotion? How long have you been a Christian? Well, a long time. Were you, your children born in a home of believing parents? Oh, yes, they were. 
Um, so you've been born again a long time, and your children that were born to you were born into a Christian home. Yeah, did you have devotions? Hmm. Crickets. Did you did you make a regular practice of attending fellowship? Crickets. No, you didn't do any of the things that that would have at least you know helped your children. And 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 now I'm sad because you gave them away. A lot of parents don't realize they're doing that, John. You do. You've got small children. You know, I, I my children are well into adulthood, and I have ten grandchildren, you know, or so. And um, no, I, I even as a grandfather, I still care about their souls, and I want my children, all my children, including my children's children, to go to heaven. As you know that, you have the same feeling. And so... We'll be talking about that tomorrow. Yeah, I look forward to that. And, and what's interesting here is when you look at uh, the word child here, or it says children, sometimes I think we get this idea that it's talking about small children. But it's talking about older children because when you cross-reference that word, it references son or daughter. And, uh, and it's interesting that it's not just primarily speaking about young children. Even some of us who are older who are children, there's still a responsibility to have obedience in the mm -hmm. Lord. And and then in that passing it on to our children as Absolutely, you mentioned. Absolutely, you know, there's not a time coming that I no longer will be a father to them until I go to heaven. I'll be on earth, always their father, even though they're adult children. I'm still their dad, and Marie will still be mama. That's what we are, and I don't abdicate that. I don't give that to somebody else. I don't intend somebody else to take the role and place of their father. See, again, you know, I was, I was um, saved at the age of 20. I began to read the Bible, and, and I began to see how important certain things were and eventually matured to understand how, how influence from a mom and dad is so important. And they watch what I do and don't necessarily um, just hear what I say. Because if I say love, well, what is love? So they watch dad with mom. They watch daddy with uh, with them and with others, and they learn love. So that word love that is nebulous at first begins to become concrete. Oh, to love my wife? Oh, yeah, my, my dad would get up early, and my dad would go with her places. My dad would date her. My dad would, would tell her in front of us all the time how deeply he loved her. My father wept over her. I mean, I've done that with my children in private. You know, Joseph can tell you he lived with us recently and he'd see me talk to their, of their mom and I'd cry. Why? Because she's so mean. <laughs> no, but because my heart is so knit with her that my children know that, that there's no woman on the face of the earth that I, I want to be with other than that woman. They know that. And they know that, that my grandchildren mean everything to us. They know that they mean everything to us. John, and they know their souls matter to us. So that's 40-some years of pouring into children. And uh, why? Because I don't want to go to heaven without them. I don't. So I evangelize my children. I, st I still do, John. I, you've seen me do it. I do it in various ways. But they know when they talk to Dad, they're going to hear godly advice. They're not going to just hear me talk to him as some man. I'm talking to him as, as a man who loves the Lord and loves them and all of that. That's what we'll talk about tomorrow to some degree. And, and I like what you're pointing out here. Either as parents, we take our children to a place where they obey the Lord, or the world will take oh, them to the a world, place. World, either we them. teach them what he is, or they teach them what he's not. That's how that works. you know. And I'll tell you one last thing, and I know that I won't say this tomorrow. That just comes to mind right now. You know, my children have sin natures. They grew up as as children with a sin nature. Uh, at a certain point, they made decisions that I wasn't always blessed with or pleased with. And many in this church in earlier days know some of those decisions and how painful they were. Um, some of them left this church because they, they thought I was just a bad father, you know. And, I, and Marie and I paid the price for that with people's accusations and and, and things that were very painful because my children went through a painful period in their life, like I guess most, almost every other kid does, right? But they're not supposed to have those things. Remember that. I'm a perfect man who creates perfect children. They didn't have sin natures. They didn't have wills of their own. 
So that's how people actually think, John, and misinterpret scripture to, to make their point. But this is the thing. Without going into names and stuff, I don't want to embarrass my, my, my family. I will tell you this, that one of my children had a, um, you know, had a child out of wedlock prior to marriage, and they did marry, and it was painful. And uh, I would say several hundred in this church left because of what a bad father I am and all of that. Hundreds left the church. But you know what I did the other day is I baptized that little one because that 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 parent um, made the decision to to love that baby into the kingdom. So God's grace triumphs, John. It always does. And I am never going to feel ever shame, ever any shame for for loving my baby and doing the best I could to help that person uh, out of a very hard period in their life. And I will never be upset about that. And those who left, well, I hope they found the perfect church. Mm-hmm. I hope they found the perfect church. But here, God's grace has always abounded. God's grace abounded to you. God's grace abounded to me. God's grace abounds to my children, you know? And that's what I've taught my children. And my my the one who had this child that that many left because of, and I could tell you stories, um, I baptized that child. And that child loves the Lord. That child has a little little journal where they 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 write their story to God. They 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 will on 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 their social media they'll they'll tell their friends what can I pray f- about for you. You know what? That's yes, God's grace abounds and no sin sin is evil, but where there is evil God's grace is greater. And you just hold fast and you just love your babies and you just don't give up on them and you just pray for them and you're there for them and that's what parents do. At least that's what this parent does. And so yeah, we'll talk I won't talk about that tomorrow. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But that's that's between you and me and the seven people who watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pastor, thank you so much. And we do want to invite the church family out to our Wednesday night service at 7 p.m. Come join us for a time of worship. Get into God's Word as uh, Pastor will be speaking on the believing children. Mm, believing children. And so come out and join us. Invite a friend. We look forward to having you. Pastor, thank Amen. you so much. And God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless Amen. you.